Okay, I'm going to listen to a diagnostic pretest from one of my students in my online TOEFL course. The student's name is Min Su. The purpose of the pretest is for me to diagnose specifically which vowel and consonant sounds this student needs more practice with. So I have over 48 different lessons in the pronunciation section of my course. So what I'll do is I'll listen to the actual pretest. I'll pinpoint what the problems are and then tell the student what uh, he needs to do. Okay, now I'm going to go over to my website. I need to find the pretest. Okay, here we go. Make sure my phone's off here. Pretty much every day I get about 10 to 12 speaking and pronunciation practice tests submitted from my online students. So it takes a lot of discipline. Each day I have to spend about an hour to two hours every day just giving feedback to my online TOEFL course students. Okay, here we go. Pronunciation, pretest. And here is Minsu's comments. Uh, this is the pretest for vowel and consonant sound. Pot, boat, wrong, grow, honor, over, father, though, pad, pot, map, mop, tag, talk, on, own. Mac, mop, bright, brown, broil, lie, loud, loyal, pie, pound, gate, get, late, let, mate, met, blade, bled, dan, then, meet, mid, pit, pit, leap, lip, feet, fit, Heat, hit, look, look, lock, took, tool, tough, could, cool, match, mash, cheap, ship, feature, fisher, shaft, shaft, cheer, shear, off, off, health, have, fine, vine, fen, then, waffle, waver, how, habit, who, rehash, behavior, hate, batman, bitten, important, brightening, hat track, threatened, major, measure, fraggle, frazzler, legend, legend, engine, azure, Large, Asia, cake, keg, think, sag, came, game, cap, gap, lake, lag, lean, rear, better, luggage, rugged, rocked, other, right, light, committed, pace, base, flap, pl flap, Cap, cap, lap, lap, pay, bay, lice, lice, sip, zip, zoo, zoo, maze, maze, Elisa, Eliza, multiple, Robert, example, pressure, principle, number, people, philosophical, Volcanism, written, maximum, question, summer, reason, chasm, often, tip, dip, cart, card, tight, tide, train, drain, fat, fat, team, dream, thigh, thigh, breathe, the breath, breathe, teeth, Tith, throw, throw, worth, worthy.
Yeah, hi there, Min Sue, and this is Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7 Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT. I'm listening to your diagnostic pretest for vowel and consonant sounds. I just listened to part A. So here are my suggestions so far. So overall, you have very good pronunciation, so I congratulate you on your efforts. Uh, there's a few areas you can work on, but you really have done a great job so far in your life uh, speaking and pronouncing uh, the sounds of American English. So here are my recommended lessons. Uh, lesson number nine, focus on the I, lie, pie. So that one. Also lesson number ten, you can probably, a little bit on that, maybe especially the longer one, gate, get. Uh, lesson number 15, with lesson 15, focus on the glottal stop in that particular lesson. These are sounds like Batman, bitten, important, brightening, hat rack, threatened, that particular sound. You can also focus on lesson 16, both of those sounds. Uh, lesson 19. The, the main thing with lesson 19, you know how to pronounce the P and the B, but here's where you want to be careful. When the P is at the end of the word, now remember the, the, the P is a voiceless consonant, so the vowel sound before should be shorter. If the B is at the end of the word, that's a voice consonant, the vowel which precedes it should be longer. So then we'll say flap, flab, cap, cab, lap, Lab. So you have to remember to make that, that vowel longer when it precedes the B at the end of a word. Uh, I think that's it. So overall, not bad. So lesson 9, 10, 15, 16, 19. Those are the lessons I suggest you focus on more. Uh, I still think you should go through all of my pronunciation lessons, but focus on, on those ones I outlined in this discussion thread more than the other lessons. Okay, let's listen to the next part of your uh, pretest. I study uh, in Korea for my entire life, and I used to work in the international companies such as Johnson Johnson and British American Tobacco. Let me go back for a minute. Brain. Fat. And I used to work in the international companies such as Johnson Johnson and... I would say... Okay, that's okay how you say American it. Tobacco. Uh, the, the reason why I try to improve my uh, speaking skill is that I really want to get the 26 plus score in the TOEFL so that I can apply for the MBA program uh, for the future. Okay. I really hope to achieve the uh, speaking session in particular because I got the, the great score in other parts. I would say hope to achieve in the speaking section. I would say hope to achieve a strong score in the speaking section. But I really struggle a lot to get the higher score in speaking. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. So I think on this one, uh, when you're speaking English, you sometimes have some pauses and some hesitations in there, which make it a little distracting. So that's something that you want to work on. So for you, uh, keep posting your speaking practice tests on a regular basis. Uh, I recommend that you keep a speaking journal. I think that's going to be important for you. Uh, and, and as you keep your speaking journal, you want to write down any comments that I give you as it relate to delivery, language use, and also topic development. So you'll notice after a week or so, you'll see some patterns forming with your uh, speaking. And these are the issues that you want to work on and improve upon in order to reach your goal of 26. You can do this. You have good pronunciation. You did very well on the pretest. So I'm very confident that you will be able to reach your goal uh, hopefully within the next month or so. That's my goal for you. All right, so uh, in terms of your intelligibility score, and I will put a link to it in the discussion thread, uh, overall, I'm going to put you at 4.1 out of 7, and you can click on the link to learn more about what that score means to you. But overall, your speaking is uh, pretty good. Okay, now I go ahead and send Minsu these comments. Uh, 
and he will listen to these online. So we never meet face to face. I will never see him. He will never see me. But we talk to each other online. But it's delayed, which means he posts a speaking or, or practice test one day, then the next day uh, I listen to it. Okay, now I just need to save this, and I go to my next practice test. As soon as this is saved, then we go to the next one. And my general rule for my online students is they're paying a, a fee. They pay a tuition of $45 a month, right? That gives them access to over 700 lessons. But sometimes students can get a little bit ambitious and they want to do a little bit too much and I don't have enough time to do that. So my basic rule is, Min Su and all the other students, uh, they can complete one speaking or one pronunciation uh, practice test daily. And it can't be more than about 60 seconds. That's my only rule. And that way I have enough time to listen to the speaking practice test submitted by all my students. Now this next guy, Shambesh, interesting enough, he's about 23 points on the TOEFL. He's missing uh, his required score of 24 by one point. He's working very hard on his pronunciation and also his speaking. So let me listen to part of this. Hi, Michael. How are you doing, sir? Happy Fourth of July to you, and uh, happy okay. So he's just going to talk to me right now. So let's see what he says. And whenever he talks to me, I'm going to listen to it and then comment on him, so he can get comments directly on what he is saying. Yeah. Hi there, Shimbesh, and this is Michael, the founder owner and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the seven-step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. And I'm going to listen to your uh, pronunciation right now. Hi, Michael. How are you doing, sir? Happy Fourth of July. I'm doing very well. Happy July to you. And, uh, thank you. Happy Fourth of July to you, too. Happy Independence Day to all fellow Americans. Yeah, thank you. First, I will pronounce the practice pronunciation, practice pronunciation, practice three, three, blending vowel and consonant sounds. Okay. So you're working on thought groups and blending? Example, take off. One, look it up. Two, pass. Okay, now let me go ahead and find this, uh, Shambesh. I'm going to go into my course for just a quick second. Okay, here we go. Hold on a minute. So let me find this. Let's see if I have it here. Solver, the handout for break breakup. Five sound of. I'm trying to figure out which one this is. Okay, I think I got it. I got it. Okay, so you're working on blending, and blending is very complicated, no doubt. At least you're working on it. So that basically means when you have a word like look and then it, you take the final sound in the one word, you link it to the next sound of the next word. So you're practicing some rules surrounding blending. Okay, now I can listen to it. I'm ready to give you feedback. Hi, Michael. How are you doing, sir? Happy Fourth of blending vowel and consonant sounds. Okay, here we go. For example, take off. One, look it up. Two, Good. Two, pass over. The handout. Nice. For pre breakup. Five, sound off. Six, walk in. Seven, plan on. Eight, raise up. Nine, count at. Good. 
Nice. Turn right about. Then the sentence is at the end of the video. One, would you mind turning your music down? Two, after I hold up the painting, tell me if it's straight or not. Three, why didn't Steve show up for our biologist? Okay, wait a minute, we go back. I need to get these. Right more. about. Then the sentence is at the end of the video. Okay, here we go. One, would you mind turning your music down? Good. Two, after I hold up the painting, tell me if it's straight or not. Three, why didn't Steve show up for our biology study group last night? Good. Four, I'll be keeping my nose to the grindstone every day now. Five, Angela looks back on her, on her youth with satisfaction. Okay. Six, I have many responsibilities I would like to get out of. Okay. Seven, the supervisor will check off its chore as it's completed. Eight, and then make sure you pronounce that off. We'll check off each chore as it is completed. It, Mary didn't appreciate it. John's butting in on her, on her conversation with Jack. A little bit of problems with that one. I would pause after appreciate. So Mary didn't appreciate John's butting in in her conversation with Jack. So I would pause after appreciate, then say the rest of the sentence. Nine, the woman understands why Mary was at home last night. Good. Ten, could you look on the map and tell me where Interstate 15 is? Okay, good. So uh, I think you have the, the general idea there. So you're taking the final sound of the one word and you're linking it to the next sound. Remember the rule is blending only occurs within thought groups, which means you'll never blend one word to another word of another thought group. It only occurs within those thought groups. All right, so good job on that, Chambesh. So, if you wonder what it sounds like to score about 23 on the, on the speaking section, that is it. That's Shembez. She's taken the TOEFL about four times, and that's where he is right now. So, my theory is, I think it's pretty good theory, is the only reason he's not reaching his goal of 24 is delivery. He needs to work on solving some of these pronunciation problems. Once he does that, He's going to skyrocket. His TOEFL score will skyrocket, and he's making a lot of good progress. Okay, now I'm going to save his response, and I move on to the next practice test. And I just repeat this process every day. And uh, the last I counted, man, I can't even remember how many it is. I think I've scored about 7,000 speaking practice tests over the last three or four years. I just do this every day. And it's crazy, but as detailed as, as, as it is, a lot of my students, after two or three months, bam, they reach their goal. They get 26 or higher in the speaking, and that's it. I never hear from them again. And I don't want to hear from them again, other than they'll come back to tell me their scores and say, thank you, I say you're welcome, and that's it. And then they... they, they, be, they they can become a pharmacist, a doctor. They can pursue whatever dreams they have. Why is that? Because they reach their goal, right? Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to Dieta79. In Dieta's case, her score is right around 24 points out of 30 on the speaking, and her goal is 26. So she's very close to reaching her goal. And again, it's mostly delivery issues. Most students who get stuck at 23, 24 points, it's because of delivery. That is exactly what's holding them back. Once they can unlock or undo what we call those fossilized problems with their pronunciation, once they get rid of those problems, their score goes up. That's it. It's as simple as that. Of course, it's hard to undo those problems, but it is possible. I've been working with Dieta now for about uh, three months. Okay, let me talk to her for a second. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Dieta79, and I am Michael, the founder owner and the materials writer for all of your lessons. And uh, how are you doing today? And you completed independent speaking practice test number 187. 
So it says, you're starting your own business. What is the most important thing you should do that will help your business to succeed? Give reasons and examples to support your response. In my opinion, I would say marketing. That would be my opinion. But who knows? There's a lot of things that make a business succeed, right? But marketing would definitely be one of the, one of the ones I would talk about. Okay, let's hear what you have to say. In my opinion... Hard work and motivation. Now, in my opinion, you don't need to say that. That's not needed. It's three words. They're necessary words because we already know it's your opinion. So remember, only put words in there that help advance what you're trying to argue. Right? You're, you're trying to show progression of thought here. So don't waste your time with words that don't really have much meaning. Are the most important things that would help any... Hard work and motivation are the most important things that would help any new business to succeed. Okay. First of all, hard work is a key factor which is very important to help any business to run on smoothly. Okay, so I like that. So hard work, that's your first support point that connects back to the introduction. I had a little bit of trouble with your intelligibility. Let me go back to what you just said. Any business to run on smoothly. For example... To run... I think you're saying smoothly, am I right? Important to help any business to run on smoothly. For to run on smoothly, I think you're saying, but you, you, you don't need to say run on, just say to run smoothly or to operate efficiently, if you want to use that word. For example, if I want to set up a new business, I have to do a lot of effort, such as asking for help from... I would say I have to make a lot of effort instead of do a lot of effort. You, you know what? You could probably say it either way. I would prefer that you say make an effort instead of do an effort because that's... I can't explain exactly why, but usually we have certain kinds of words. We make efforts. We do assignments. Efforts and do a lot of research in order to gain a profit in the long run. Okay. Moreover, motivation... Now, I like that in the long run. That's kind of a natural type saying that native speakers use. And the fact that you could use that shows you have a lot of experience with the English language. So very nice choice of words there. Another very important key factor that would help any new business to succeed. For instance, it's very common... Let me go back to what you just said here. In order to gain a profit in the long run. Moreover, motivation is another very important key factor that would help any new business to succeed. Motivation. Wow, I thought you said education in the beginning there, so I, I misunderstood that. For instance, it's very common for any new work to go up and down. But if I get motivated all the time, I would eventually gain profit from... So, instead of saying to go up and down, you might say, well, it's normal for most companies' productivity to go up and down or to increase or decrease or to fluctuate. If you want to use it even better words, or then you could say, well, it's, it's normal for a business's productivity to fluctuate. That's probably even better. And that exactly explains what you're saying. Which is why I believe this way. All right. So let's take a look here. Very close here, Dieta. Uh, I think overall... Uh, you had pretty good language use, however, you had a minor issue with the word make an effort. You said do an effort. You said to go up and down. I would say maybe fluctuates a little bit better word. And then talk about productivity or profits fluctuating, something that might be a little bit better way to say that. So some minor language use issues. I think topic development, very strong in your organization. You had the topic statement in the beginning. You restated those key points points in the body so you had a pretty good connection of ideas and you use relevant supporting details so the question here is where do you score and why would you get a score of four on this one um, I'm going to say it's possible, possible. I, I don't know, it's hard for me to, to say. remember. To get 26, you have to get a score of four on four of your tasks and then a score of three on two of them. That puts you at 26. Uh, I'm going to say it's possible, maybe. Uh, I'm going to put you between about 24 to 26 points on this practice test, 3.1 to 3.3 out of four. That's, that's where I'm going to put you. All right, anyway, thank you for completing. 
Independent Speaking Practice Test number 187. Don't forget to write down the word fluctuate. That's a great word. So now you just listen to a student whose TOEFL score is right around 24. You see how complicated it is? She's so close. She's got a few minor issues in there, but some of those issues are probably strong enough that could bring down the overall score, and she might get a 3 instead of a 4 on that practice test, or on that speaking task, if it were the TOEFL exam. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save hers. I go to the next one. Okay, let's see which one we have next. Now we got another pretest. This is goes by the username PBOX1010. So this student, uh, like the other student, uh, Minsu, is completing a pretest for vowel and consonant sounds. Lesson 7. Pat. Boat. Row. Row. Honor. Over. Father. Son. Lesson 8. Pat. Pot. Mat. Lock. Tack. Tuck. Earn. Earn. Mat. Lock. Lesson 9. Right. Row. Row. Line, loud, loyal, high, pound. Lesson 10, gate, get, late, let, mate, met, way, blend, day, bend. Lesson 11, meet, meet. This is trouble, lesson pit. 11. Leap, leap. Sit, sit, hit, hit. Lesson 12. Look, look, black, took, two, dot, cloud, who. Lesson 13. Match, mash, chip, ship, feature, fisher, shaped, shaft. Cheer, cheer. Lesson 14. Off, off, half, half, fine, fine, friend, run. Problems with the V Waffle. in the beginning of a word. Waver. Lesson 15. How, habit, who, rehash, behavior, hate, badly. Comes with the right. guado stop. Hot truck. Threatening. Lesson 16. Mayor. Measure. Fragile. Fraser. Legend. Lesson. Problems with the palatal consonant. Asia. Large. Asia. Lesson 17. Cake. Sing, say, came, gain, cap, gap, wake, lag. Lesson 18, lean, rear, better, luggage, watch, order, right, light, committed. Lesson 19, peace, base, flat, flat. 
Cap. Cap. Some trouble here, right. too. Right. Hey. Hey. Where's some trouble? Rise. Rise. Zip. Zip. Zoo. Zoo. Maze. Maze. Elisa. Elisa. Let's go to the road. Multiple. Robert. Example. Ratio. Principle. Number. People. Philosopher. Lesson 22. Volcanism. Writing. Maximum. Question. Summer. Reason. Charleston. Often. Lesson 23. Tip. Dip. Cart. Car. Tight. Tight. Train. Drain. Cat. Tie. Tip. Dream. Lesson 24. Tie. Tie. Trouble here. Ring. Teeth. Teeth. Throw. Tuttle. Tongue. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for your username is pbox1010, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. I just listened to your pretest for vowel and consonant sounds, so let's take a look at it. Uh, overall, uh, let's say, okay, here are the lessons I think you should focus on the most. You might want to write these down, so get a pen, some paper. Lesson number 7, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 23, and lesson number 24. Now there's three lessons I want to talk in a little more detail. It's lesson number 17, lesson number 19, and lesson number 23. So in order to understand what I'm going to say here, you might want to go back to the pronunciation part of my course and you make, make sure you understand what a voiced and a voiceless consonant is. Right? So certain consonants, there's vibration in our vocal folds when we produce those sounds. And other types of consonants, there's no vibration here. Let me give you two examples. The S. S or the Z. Z. The Z is more of a voice consonant. The S is a voiceless consonant. So why am I telling you this? This is a key. When you have a voice consonant at the end of a word, the vowel which precedes that should be longer. When a voiceless consonant at the end of the word, the vowel which precedes it should be shorter. So now let's go to lesson 17. Okay, you see the words cake, keg, sink, sag, lake, lag. Notice how I'm making the one vowel longer when it precedes the G, consonant. I'm just following that rule I told you. The same thing when you go to lesson 19. Notice this. Flap, flab. Cap, cab. Lap, lab. It's the same rule. So the vowel is longer when it precedes the B because it's a voice consonant. Now let's move to the last one. Lesson 23, it's the same principle. Notice. Cart, card. Tight, tied. Fat, fad. So in order to really, for a native speaker to understand what you're saying, you should be careful about whether the vowel is longer or shorter when it precedes a voiceless or voice consonant. Your tendency is to keep it the same duration no matter what, which you don't want to do. So you'll say fat, fat. I say fat, fad. Right? You say tight, tight. I say tight, tied. Right? So you have to make sure you're differentiating that. So that's important. So now you know. Now you know which lessons you can focus on the most, I think, which will have a very good impact on helping you to speak more clearly. It takes practice, right?
And that's part of my job is to help you understand what your problems are and now you know which lessons you can focus on to get better. Now let's listen to the next part of your pretest. You say the word part. Part B. Make sure you pronounce that P with a little more air. What is your educational background and your world history? I'm a dentist who graduated from South America, from Venezuela. I worked for seven years in between my private practice and for the Department of Health. In my country, then I'm way to. Now, when you say I work for. Either I have worked for, which means you still work for the company, or I worked for a company, which means you no longer work there. So be careful. Make sure you pronounce. If you're using past tense in this case, an ED, it's actually pronounced like a T. United States. In the United States, I've been working as a dental assistant and now as a dental hygienist and looking forward. To get my license as a dentist. Okay. Passes. What is it important for you to improve your speech and pronunciation abilities of American English? Pretty much, I will be a doctor in this country. I understand that as a doctor, I have to answer too many questions to the patients. I have to be pretty clear. Instead of answer too many questions, I would just say I have to answer many questions so typically native speakers don't typically put that preposition after the word answer and once you use it like this I will answer to my supervisor for what happened or I answered the questions effectively and efficiently I have to be uh, yeah clear in my, in my pronunciation because the patient they need uh, I wouldn't say because the patients they need, just say because the patients need. Once you put because and then you have your subject, you want to have a verb after that. There's no need to have another subject there. Simple response, clear, and uh, the way they can understand pretty good. I would say they can understand well. I would use an adverb after understand, not an adjective. What they are asking to me or... Uh, could clarify everything. I would say what they are asking me, not what they're to, asking to me. Right to, to say. And pretty much for uh, just talk to different people, different social levels, I can adapt my pronunciation and my English. So you can talk with everybody in this country. What do you hope to achieve in this course? I hope to have a really good pronunciation. I hope to improve my reading. I'm kind of slow reader, even in my native uh, language, Spanish. Yeah, I remember you telling me that uh, it's kind of hard, but you notice in the reading section of my course, I have 70 speed reading tests. Your goal is to try to increase your reading speed from 100 to 350 words a minute. You can do that by going through the reading section of my online course. Uh, if I go reading a passage book for another person at the same time, most of the people finish first, I mean, so even in Spanish I'm a slow reader. So my goal here are those two points pretty much. Uh, increase my speed reading and uh, improve my pronunciation to be more confident in okay. what I want to say. And I'm guessing if you if you need speaking for a, to become a doctor, you're probably looking at at least 26 points or higher on the TOEFL exam, am I right? Okay, now my next step is, let's talk about your intelligibility score. So as I was listening to your Part B questions, I noticed that you do have some language use issues and pronunciation issues in there, so I think. Uh, I'm going to put your score at about 3.4 out of 7 right now, so you definitely need to make improvements with your speaking. 
Now, I'm going to give you some suggestions, and some of this is going to help you with, with a lot of your language use, but really focus right now on getting as much exposure to the language as you can. And that will help you with your pronunciation because you'll be watching, watch a lot of TV, watch a lot of movies, listen to a lot of music. You can also spend time reading magazines and newspapers and books. And all this exposure helps you improve your speaking, including your language use, which is some issues you're having right now. All right, so your score again is 3.4 out of 7. Now, I recommend P-Box 1010. As you go through my pronunciation lessons, I recommend go through all of them, but then focus more on the ones I outlined in this discussion thread. As you do your pronunciation practice, read out loud with me as I teach you the information in the videos. Uh, at the end of each video, there are, there are some sentence and paragraph readings that you can practice. Uh, you can post these here at the Voxypop discussion group if you want to post a pr pronunciation practice, but remember you can only do one per day, only one, and make sure it's not more than 60 seconds long. And I'll definitely give you some feedback in that area if you want to see if you're mastering the pronunciation lessons that you are studying. All right, thank you very much and good luck to you. So I'm done with this one, so now I just save it online. He checks it today or tomorrow, and he will get all the comments I just said to him uh, when he goes to the Voxipop discussion group. Okay, let's see how many more I have to grade here. I'm going to get something to drink. Uh, let's see. Being an online TOEFL teacher is kind of similar to being an online TOEFL student. The key is, is I have to do things every day to help my students. I can't wait until the end of the week. If I did, think about it. If I didn't score these practice tests today, I would have 10 or 12 more tomorrow, 10 or 12 the next day, and then on Saturday, I'd have close to 100 speaking practice tests. So for me, I would rather spend one or two hours every day than have to wait until Saturday and do eight or nine or even 10 hours of grading. Who wants to do that? So why am I saying that? It's kind of similar to language study. I recommend, I tell my students, it's better to study one to two hours every day as they work on their TOEFL preparation as opposed to trying to study it just one or two days a week. Okay, let's go to our next speaking practice here. We have Adriana. Hi. Good you? morning. Pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if you saw the email that came through yesterday, but it's for our celebration, and it's to um, celebrate the 50 Ways of Serve uh, okay. activities that we've been doing. So I'm coming around to collect to see if you'd be able to attend our celebration. It's going to be at the Double Tree in Hilton on hospitality, and it'll be on July 14th from 3 to 6. What day is that? Oh, the 14th. I think it's a Thursday, but let me double check. Yes, it's a Thursday. Next Thursday. 
Is it like a mandatory thing? No, no, no. We just, uh, they need reservations. And so if yeah, you make it. Yeah, I probably not. I'm, okay. I'm teaching in some San Bernardino, uh, some Catholic priests on that day. So. Got it. Okay, so I'll put you down for now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yeah, no problem. Have a good class. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Okay, these comments are for Adriana SV, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. And I'm going to listen to your practice test. This is practice test number one. So let's take a look at what this one is. Describe a place you visited as a child. What is your favorite memory while visiting this place? So this is a hard question because it has that descriptive uh, task in there. A lot of students will simply bypass that and just focus on the next part of the question, which is definitely not what you want to do. Okay, here we go. I visited when I was a child in Disneyland. I remember how much I enjoyed looking at the parades. Sporting. You want to hear something crazy? My wife and uh, son are going to Disneyland today. I'm not kidding you. I cannot make it up. In fact, they left. They already left, and they're trying to get down there for breakfast because my son wants to have Mickey Mouse pancakes. <laughs> no kidding. Okay, let's go back. I visited when I was a child in Disneyland. Be careful with the word child, not child, but child. So make sure you're pronouncing the CH as a CH and not as an SH consonant sound. I remember how much I enjoyed looking at the parades for three main reasons. First reason, I loved the music that the bands were playing. I don't think for three main reasons it's going to be hard to really give details there, but I like how you're focusing on the parade. What you can do is, is describe the parade first and then explain a favorite memory that you had uh, while watching the parade. That will help you be more connected to the speaking task. The second reason is that I was fascinated with the decorations of the allegorical cards. And the third reason is that I was amazed staring at the characters that I recognized from the TV. For example, the costume of the Princess Beauty made her look gorgeous, like in a fairy tale. So, looking at the parades was my favorite experience as a little girl. But maybe that's your favorite memory. That's probably... So, my favorite memory while watching the parade is when I saw the princess uh, from Aladdin or whatever. Okay, so let's take a look here. I think here you probably didn't really explicitly address both parts of the speaking task. One, describe a place. Two, what's your favorite memory while visiting the place? You could have more directly, more specifically answered both parts of that question. Your vocabulary is a little bit basic, and you could probably do a little bit better in that area also. So I'm giving you feedback right now in terms of topic development and language use. I think those areas you can probably improve on a little bit more. I'm going to put you at about 2.1 out of 4, 17 points out of 30 on this practice test. That's a hard one. A lot of students, when they, they get this question, and a lot of questions on the TOEFL speaking are very specific, but students give kind of general, what we call uh, contrived or template type answers that don't really address a task, and they're not going to get a great score. So what can you learn here? I think what we can learn as TOEFL students is I would not try to memorize a certain template that you try to fit into every speaking situation. That's probably not a good idea. It doesn't create what I call spontaneous or creative type speaking anyway. 
So if you look at the question that we answered here, describe a place, what's your favorite memory? The student just went to a template that she was familiar with and she explained why she enjoyed visiting the place instead of explaining what her favorite memory was while visiting Disneyland. So she didn't really exactly answer the question. So she needs to learn how to decode the question first. And when she understands what the question is, then she has to figure out the best way to organize her response instead of using a template to fit in that situation. And the template did not work. And that resulted in her having a lower score. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I'm almost done. Oh, and I haven't even checked my email yet. What does that mean? That's probably another one or two hours. So, so far what I've done today is I simply went to my Voxipop speaking group for TOEFL speaking and I've been listening and responding to my students. Um, practice test. That's what I do first. I want to do that first every day. Uh, so I think that's important. My students get feedback uh, pretty quickly here. So this next student, this is um, she goes by the username uh, Mel de Almeida and she's doing an integrated speaking practice test, listening and speaking and typically her speaking right now is kind of around between two and two and a half out of four. Okay, so let me talk to her. Uh, hi there, these comments are for Mel Del Meda, and I am Michael, the founder owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. And you completed uh, integrated speaking practice test number 11, so listening speaking. Teachers can make their classes become more attractive and fun for the kids when they apply the technique called interactive classes. Now, who is saying this? Where is this coming from? Is this information coming from reading passage or listening passage? If so, you want to make sure that you frame it from that perspective so we can understand who is saying it. Your pronunciation is a lot better here, by the way. A lot better. You're recording very clear. So what I would do is you, you, you can talk about the according to the reading passage or according to the listening passage. Say things like that. These are called voice markers and it helps us know that you're summarizing the information and not just giving your own opinion. In the interactive classes, teachers are allowed to... So the interactive classes, according to the reading passage, blah, blah, blah. Find verbal explanations with the use of objects to exemplify and discuss points in the lessons, making the children become more attentive. Maybe thus making the children become more attentive. So maybe use a word like thus or hence. Then you create that cause-effect type relationship. Let's explain it and avoiding the boredom and distraction during the classes. Okay. Moreover, it's proven that kids become more friendly with teachers. It is proven according to what? The listening passage or the reading passage? When this technique is employed, helping them to listen more carefully. Or according to the speakers, you might say? To teachers and increasing their learning process. For example, in my many learning centers, the creativity is stimulated with the employment of interactive classes. Okay, the main issue here, and actually let me go to the rubrics here. Let me make sure I'm giving you a grade fairly and accurately. So I want to go to my integrated speaking rubric here. 
Okay, here we go. So I think you're, you're summarizing information as it comes from a listening passage. Speakers are discussing how to make learning more interactive for students. Am I right? Okay, so topic development. You need to make sure that you're explaining this as a summary. So you need to put voice markers in there according to the speakers, according to the listening passage, or the speakers in the passage suggest another point made is... So you don't really have the right point of view as you explain the information. So that's a topic development issue. Uh, you had some minor language use issues, maybe some minor delivery issues on this one, but I definitely think that you're making a lot of progress with your delivery. Why is that? In some cases, your pronunciation was so difficult, I was a asking you to send it to me to actually write out what you're saying, but you didn't even need to do that. I could understand everything that you were saying without having to read it, so that's definitely some progress for you. Uh, overall, your score, I'm going to put you at about 2.3 out of 4, 18 points out of 30. So when you're explaining information from a reading passage or a lecture, you need to summarize that information, right? And you have to do it from the point of view of the passages, not from your own point of view. So I think that's something that you can improve upon. One more. And that particular student has actually made a lot of progress. And that's what I like as a TOEFL teacher is to see. I look at the very beginning, the very first recording the student posted online, and then I can listen to something the student posted two or three months from now, and wow! The difference is incredible. It tells you that if you practice a lot, you're going to get better. That's the bottom line. Okay, we got one more here. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Marcelock, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. And I'm going to listen to your independent speaking practice test number five. All right, so let's take a look at what this one is. So describe important person. Let me say it again. Describe an important person in your life. Then explain why the person is important to you. So again, there's two parts to this question. It's not just why the person is important, but to describe the person first and then move to the second part of the task. So I try to put different kinds of questions in here to prevent uh, my students from trying to just memorize and use templates. All right, so here we go. One of the most important person in my life is my mom because she has supported me and they she has supported me in my education. First of all, he has supported me, for example, when I was in. Now, what I would say, instead of moving to the second part of the question to talk about why she's important, give some description. Tell me who your mother is first, in maybe 15 seconds or so. You can talk about her, um, 
if she you can talk about what job she has or if she's a stay-at-home mom you can talk about her personality you can describe her physical features you can talk about the kinds of clothes that she wears and any other things that distinguish her from someone else my elementary school and she started with me trying to solve a hard homework that I had in that moment. And also she made my education. So she is why I am an engineer now. So because of those reasons, my mother is the most important person in my life.